All right, today our viewer question, uh, they have said they know your stance on alcohol is um, that little to none is best, but they're curious if you could share how the body actually processes alcohol. Oh my, uh, certainly back to biochemistry 101, uh, and it's a wonderful process. It's amazing that uh, our body knows how to, to handle this molecule uh, that we have enzyme systems set up for. Uh, but alcohol, uh, ethanol, uh, ethyl alcohol is a very small molecule, two carbon atoms uh, with some oxygens and hydrogens sticking off to the side there. And uh, when you drink it, it has the effect that it has uh, as far as your brain goes, and it produces the alcohol effects that you go everything from a, a nice glow uh, to uh, uh, to more dire effects as people drink more and more. Uh, they get them, they get nauseated, they get headachy, uh, and uh, their uh, blood vessels dilate, their nose gets red, their face gets red, uh, and the dilated blood vessels allow the blood pressure to drop, people can faint, uh, they are, may get uh, nauseated and vomit, and they the blood vessels in their head dilate, they get headaches, uh, and this is the continuum. Why is this happening? Good heavens, uh, it's supposed to, uh, just a glass of wine is supposed to give you a nice glow. And if you hold it in a glass of wine, that's usually all that you get is the glow. But as I mentioned, as you drink more and more, what's really happening? Well, the, the blood is, with the alcohol is passing through your liver, and your liver's got some enzymes down there, two of them, that dismantle the alcohol. The first one takes off a hydrogen off of the alcohol, and it's uh, name with the purity of scientific nomenclature is alcohol dehydrogenase. Takes off a hydrogen off of alcohol. So it's alcohol dehydrogenase. And when you take that first hydrogen off, uh, that turns the molecule into what's called acid aldehyde. And you can get a feeling of saying it's an aldehyde. Like formaldehyde is a cousin of formaldehyde. This is acid aldehyde. And this is what causes that dreadful feeling of the nausea and the headache and the dilated blood vessels and the low blood pressure. It's the acid aldehyde building up as the liver is detoxifying the alcohol. This is what gives you the hangover the next morning is all the acid aldehyde in your blood that your liver's not been able to, uh, to metabolize. Eventually it does. As the acid aldehyde rides back through the liver, uh, there's another enzyme, acid aldehyde dehydrogenase, uh, and that pulls another hydrogen off of acid aldehyde this time, uh, and that turns the molecule into good old acetate, and for your biochemistry fans, that turns into acetyl-CoA uh, that goes into your Krebs cycle enzymes, and you burn it for energy. It generates ATP. So eventually, alcohol that you drink is burned for energy, uh, and it's a fuel. You, there's seven calories in every gram of alcohol, uh, and the body burns it quickly and preferentially. It can store carbon. You know, there's several forms that, that energy comes in that, that the body can burn in the Krebs cycle. Carbohydrates, about four calories a gram, and we can store some carbohydrates in the form of uh, glycogen in our muscles. Fats, nine calories a gram. Boy, we can sure store fats, but we can't store alcohol. Uh, we have no, we got to burn it. And it's the, it's the, it's, it's oxidative priority. You drink alcohol uh, with your spaghetti dinner, you're going to burn the alcohol uh, before you burn the, the carbohydrates in the pasta. And then they often, you know, people uh, drinking alcohol and eating a high carbohydrate meal, man, they, they generate some heat there uh, because the alcohol gets burned pretty quickly. Uh, so anyway, so those are the steps for the metabolism of alcohol. It goes from ethanol uh, to acid aldehyde, which causes the adverse effect, and finally the acetate that gets burned as, as, as acetyl-CoA in the Krebs cycle. So um, uh, the body can burn it, but it's toxic along the way, and it's, in its native form, in the alcohol form, it kills every cell it, it touches. They have no, uh, no uh, illusion about ethyl alcohol and its toxicity. Uh, we dip our surgical instruments into alcohol because it kills everything it touches. Uh, and uh, as, uh, as it sloshes through the body system, it causes damage in, in its alcohol form before it gets metabolized. Uh, it damages the stomach lining. You get an alcoholic gastritis. And when I use the term alcoholic, it means caused by alcohol as opposed to caused by aspirin or some other thing. But as it goes to the liver, damage the liver, you get an alcoholic hepatitis. 
It goes through the muscle, damages the muscle uh, function, you get an alcoholic myopathy. It damages the peripheral nerve, you get an alcoholic neuropathy. You damage the heart muscle, you get an alcoholic cardiomyopathy. This stuff is a toxin to every tissue in the body. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, a teetotaler, and I like a, a glass of Chardonnay twice a year with a spaghetti dinner. Yeah, it's a pleasant taste. But man, I have no illusion about what even that Chardonnay is doing. And on a regular basis, a glass of wine with dinner every night, uh, I think it is a recipe for some real tissue damage. And there's, there are statistics showing that there, every drink a woman takes, uh, her breast, risk for breast cancer goes up this much. It's, just, it's a carcinogen and the same with guys and prostate cancer. But, you know, we weren't meant to drink it on a regular basis. As I said, I have like twice a year Chardonnay. Uh, and, the, and that acid aldehyde that builds up and gives you the nausea and the toxicity and the hangover. Uh, these are messages, I think, from our body that uh, this is really not uh, a molecule that you want to, to ask your body to deal with on a regular basis. Uh, you know, uh, a glass of wine with dinner once a week, probably okay. But man, I wouldn't do a nightly glass. I don't care what your cardiologist says about what it does to your LDL. Uh, I think it's a toxic molecule. As the years go by, uh, you may wind up with a significant disease that uh, outweighs any benefit to, to your lipid profile. Uh, there's non-alcoholic wines, by the way, and non-alcoholic beers. They brew the wine, brew the beer, and then they, they heat it gently, and the alcohol boils off, and, and you're still left with the, with the essence of the wine. I'm cool with that. So uh, it's the alcohol molecule itself. So, and, and you're at the party if you've got a glass of bubbly something, whatever. It's nobody's business what's in that glass. You're a grown man or a grown woman. Uh, you don't have to be drinking wine at the party. You know, ask for the sparkling water. You know, it's nobody's business what's, what's in the glass you're holding. So free yourself from the idea you got to be I, social. I got to be drinking wine. No, you don't. Uh, just, just be there. You're there for, for you and your friends, not for the ethyl alcohol. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.